was, it was powerful. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's promotion ceremony honoring Lieutenant Colonel Ashley O. Gillen. I am Chief Master Sergeant Michael Price, your narrator. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is Colonel Rusty Ballard, commander of the 182nd Airlift League. Before we begin, please allow me to extend a special welcome to Lieutenant Colonel Geller's husband, Colonel Robert Gellner, commander of the 183rd Air Wing. Her parents, Mr. Don Jensen and Mrs. Uh, Laura Jensen. Her daughters, Ms. Bronwyn Gellner and Ms. Evelyn Gellner. And their cultural, cultural exchange pair, Ms. Fernando Figueroa. We also give a special welcome to all commanders, chiefs, First Sergeants and members of the 182nd Airlift Wing for being here to share this special occasion with, with Lieutenant Colonel Geller and her family. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party and remain standing for the posting of the colors and singing of our national anthem by Senior Airman Amelia Simonet. Present arms. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched. We're so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rattle, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land? Colors, turn, arch. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Daniel Wood. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for this day in our 182nd community. Thank you for hearing to bring us a leader like Colonel Ashley Gellner. We celebrate her promotion and would ask for your continued blessing upon her life and career and family. Please grant her your wisdom as she leads and cares for so many of us in the wing. 
Please also allow her new rank to open up to her even more opportunities to serve even more airmen. We especially want to thank you for the love and encouragement she's received from her family. May this promotion be experienced by all of them as a shared victory and confirmation of excellence and selfless service. We humbly ask for your continued blessing to rest upon Colonel Gellner's husband, Robert, and their two daughters, Bronwyn and Evelyn. May you also bless Colonel Gellner's parents, Don and Laura, as well as the Gellner family nanny, Fernando, Fernanda. God, thank you again for a day to celebrate this very special promotion. May it inspire and motivate us as we work together as defenders of freedom. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. At this time, I'd like to welcome Colonel Rusty Ballard, the commander of the 22nd Airlift Wing, to make a few comments. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for showing up today. Uh, Bob, thanks for coming up from the 183rd. Appreciate seeing you. Wynn, Evie, thank you for being here, supporting Mom and the family. Don Warren, thanks again for seeing you. Again, for Family Day yesterday, and hopefully uh, you had a good welcome yesterday as you will today as well. And Fernanda, thank you for coming as well. Uh, testament to the crowd, thank you everybody for showing up today. Nobody is here, forcefully, are they? <laughs> yeah, Bob, yeah. I haven't gotten to that line yet, but I appreciate you holding your hand up there. But no, thank you for everybody. Not only supporting the 182nd Airlift Wing, great your support, Ashley. A lot of you really haven't got to know her all that well yet, but we're going to shortly, and I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, first met Ashley uh, back in April. We were at the Air National Guard Senior Leader Conference, and at night, what you would do is your, your contingent for the state would go out to dinner and so forth, and that's what we did. And that was the first time I got to meet Ashley. And we had the whole team together, the TAG, the A-TAG, the wing commanders, the command chiefs, and everybody else. And I got the opportunity to sit next to Ashley and the whole family. The girls were there that night, and uh, immediately I got to know Ashley, and it really started to like what I got to hear. And the, the funny thing that I liked about it, she wasn't, uh, she was in war college at the time, and she was going to be looking for a job, which I knew. It was nothing like trying to sell herself. It was actually the complete opposite. And that's what I was drawn to her about because she was, I saw how humble she was. She was telling me a story, and my wife a story as well, about uh, one time she lost one of her children. I was like, oh, okay, well, and she kind of laughed at it, and I know how decorated she is in your career. So to me, that said a lot about her, and I like to hear that story because it was pretty funny. So get ready to share a beverage with her, ask that story, and you'll be entertained just as much as I was. So uh, after we left that conference, I encouraged her, because she mentioned she'd moved back to Illinois to apply for the positions. We had one coming up. So then uh, we had candidates for the vice wing commander as we lost seven years experience pretty much in one day with the last wing commander and vice wing commander. So there's going to be a lot of restructuring here on base. And I was pretty intimidated. That's a pretty big deal. Going into a UEI and everything getting ready to happen. But I had six candidates. And to be honest, each one of those candidates would have done perfectly well. All of them brought great things to the table, good people, and I could have worked with them. And each one of those people, when I talked to them during the interview, I opened it up. I said, listen, I'm interviewing for a job that I've never done. To work for me in a job I have never done. So you tell me, what does this job consist of? And everybody came back with their different stories or different iterations about how they would tackle it. And it was good. But I'll say on the hiring board, uh, some of the things I was looking for is what we do currently and what we're getting ready to do. And I'm going to talk about her career a little bit, and a lot of those things kind of stood out. And as you meet Ashley in just the last month or so that she's been here, you're seeing that uh, she's stepping up to the challenge. She's a perfect person for the position. Um, so we went through the interviews. Next time I saw her was at General uh, Nizamish's retirement. That was back in, I believe, mid-June, and we got to talk, and she was asking me, like, what is it you're looking for? What do you need me to do? And once again, I reiterated, listen, I don't know, I've never done your job before. I'm just learning my job, I'm two weeks in. So all I want you to do is be you. Be a mom, be a spouse, be an Air Force officer. And if you just show up, I promise you the people the 182nd Airlift Wing will embrace you. And I hope you've seen that so far. Because it's great people, and you're part of that. Now. So, 911 means something to everybody in this room. It means more so to her family. There's four things that stick out to me with 911. First of all, 911 is whenever she got combat mission rated as an air battle manager 
for AWACS on that day, 911. So look how much her career changed getting rated on that. What you don't know, or maybe you've read an easy read, is she lost her hand on 911. On flight 77, and the aircraft hit the Pentagon, she was in the deceased 911. The third of four things that stand out for 911 is in 2016, 15 years later to the day, her and her twin sister Whitney were promoted lieutenant colonel in the chapel at the Pentagon at the crash site. Pretty significant. 911 today, 21 years later, getting promoted to 06 colonel as vice wing commander of the 182nd Air Force. A lot going on there for 911. Really stands out to her family. So, as I mentioned, she has a twin sister named Whitney. She's a brigade commander, 06, currently in Poland uh, for the Army. Pretty significant for two twins. I know they've got five successful children, but those two that, that rank born the same day, that's pretty impressive. Very impressive, matter of fact. So she graduated from the University of Indiana in 1999, dual uh, bachelor's in Italian in poli sci. She was a foreign exchange student one time, uh, learning Italian. Pretty impressive. She got rated coming out of ROTC as an air battle manager, flying AWACS. First duty station, she went down to Tyndall. She got rated there, like I said, 911. She was her first day being combat mission rated. She met Bob down there at Tyndall, got married in 2000. Uh, first duty station after that was Tinker. And I think 330 combat hours she flew for uh, Operation During Freedom. She was flying missions over DC, uh, supporting a no fly zone. Uh, a lot going on there in that first duty station. Followed it up in Kadena, flying over the Korean Peninsula. And basically on the missions proving that North Korea had nuclear capability. Pretty significant things. I don't think she made it to Captain Dad, and that's all the things she had done so far. Uh, building a family, constantly moving around, dual status, or uh, dual service, I guess, spouses. Uh, 2007, decided for the family, let's get off of active duty. Let's go to the Guard Reserve, and they moved and they went to Dover. And that's where I see that as a leader, she really started to climb. Uh, she was over. She was a DO of an aeroport squadron, 140 plus people. She became squadron commander there. She did that for a little while. Um, then eventually moved to California Air National Guard. And this is another thing. She started adding on to that command experience. She was an F-15 conversion officer. She was the wing XP, IG branch chief. I mean, those three duties right there in that duty cycle go from a commander, XP, branch chief, conversions. That's pretty significant. If you look at any Air National Guard base trying to stay alive. Those are valuable positions to help us go into the future. These are all things that I learned during the interview process. So she took on that experience, active duty, guard, reserve, part-time, full-time, and then she went to the SNAP tour program. And if you ask her anything about the SNAP tour program, she's a phenomenal mentor on that. There's a lot of just or good things happening there. She's experienced it, so she's a perfect SNAP. Hey guys, come on and have a seat. Please. Plenty of seats, come on. So on the stat tour program, she started uh, building her resume, doing even more good things. She was NGB Conversions Branch Chief. She was NGB A Branch Chief there, or plans and programs of a $1.4 billion budget. She also did work with J5 in a joint position. Those are coveted positions and they're hard to come by, but it really sends you on that trajectory of really excelling once you get named for that. And that was over Homeland Division, uh, Deputy Division Chief, and she was J-5 representative to the National Security Council for all Homeland uh, uh, Southwest Border Operations for the Homeland Security. Following that, I think this is Bob went to Hawaii as the maintenance group commander, yes. went out there, and she went out there and did great things there too. So still raising a family. Uh, she was A-5-8 over strategic plans, and then a legislative liaison for the indo pacon commander. So that's a four-star co combatant commander, right? So that's what she was doing representing that area. Once again, look where the world's going right now. Russia and Ukraine, and China and Taiwan and Pacific. She has touched just about everything that we're concentrated on right now, not only in the United States military, but at the 182nd Airlift Wing. Most recently, before selecting, selected for this position, she was at Naval War College. She graduated the top 10% of all Air Force officers in that program. That's where she got her second master's degree. Um, so, impressive, good stuff, I like it. So. Um, like I told you before, when you ask about what you want to do for the job, I'm asking you to just be a, be a mom, be a wife, take care of the folks here, and they're going to take care of you. And we love having you. So I'm looking forward to working for you. Or with you, I guess. You're working for me, but we're working together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, you guys are 
either you're doing really well or you can't keep a job. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> but what it is, I support you and your family wherever you're going. Uh, my goal is for you to love this place so much, it's really going to hurt if you decide to leave. All right, so congratulations. Thank you. We will now proceed with the promotion portion of today's ceremony. Attention orders. The President of the United States, acting upon the recommendation of the Secretary of the Air Force, has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, integrity, and abilities of Lieutenant Colonel Ashley Gellner. In view of these special qualities and her demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade, Lieutenant Colonel Gellner is authorized to assume the grade of Colonel, United States Air Force. Effective 9 August 2022 by order of the Secretary of the Air Force. Now we invite Mr. and Mrs. Jensen, Colonel Robert Gellner, and their children, Wynn and, and Ebby Gellner, to conduct the pinning. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Ballard will now re-administer the oath of office to Colonel Gellner. I state your name. I, Ashley Gellner. Having been appointed a colonel in the United States Air Force. Having been appointed a colonel in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I bear a true faith and allegiance to the same. That I bear a true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me go. So help me go. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Ashley Gellman. Thank you. for coming, everyone. I think we need to work on bringing people forward a little bit because we've got to get rid of all these programs. Although, I don't know, maybe Mom wants to take them home. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> your grandmother's so um, appreciate it. <laughs> Colonel Ballard already alluded to this, but uh, I would not be standing here today if it was not for my family and honestly for my husband uh, on Memorial Day weekend of 2021, um, we were getting ready to go to Kauai. It was the only time that we could get off the island of Hawaii. Everyone, we came from, you know, we had two, almost two years in Hawaii, but 
we didn't get to see the island. It was almost the entire time was when during COVID and it was not a great tour for us. We were very busy and it was just as um, traumatic, I think, for us as it was for everyone else sitting out here. You all have your own stories about it. Um, but we were headed back to DC. We already had a house there. Um, we, our renters were leaving and um, Bob had interviewed for a wing command position in Illinois and on the plane, uh, he accepted the, um, the offer of the wing command position. And so we literally changed our entire life in, <coughs> what, two hours, three hours, Just something like that? We, we already... did talk about it. We like <laughs> it was always a possibility, but you know, if, if you were, if you were at uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bridget uh, Sorn's change of command today or assumption of command today, she talks about, you know, your life changing in a moment. And that, that is exactly, I think, if you look at my career, our careers, that is always how our careers have, have gone. And um, the opportunity, you know, what do you think I should do? Well, I mean, he's a maintenance officer and he's a wing commander, which is, which is a, a glass breaking ceiling as well on its own. Um, as just as much as me standing up here as the first female um, vice wing commander of this wing. So um, I don't have any regrets about that whatsoever, but I had already been going out to war college and so we had to change everything and Bob took over a brand new wing and two kids and a new house and a new community and new schools and everything without me even being there. So I can't even can't even thank you enough. Easy stuff. <laughs> it was not easy. He had probably one of the worst years of his life, and I had one of the best years of my life. <laughs> and then the kids, of course, my kids. So if you guys could come up here just real quick, I have something for you. Um, so my parents have raised all of us to just be confident and um, believe that we could do anything, and I think. We've been pretty successful. All of us kids have been pretty successful with it. But I have, if you think I'm a strong female, it's because I had such a great representation in you. And being a feminist, I didn't even know that, didn't even think of it that way because it was just normal. And so it was something that we want to pass on to our kids too. So I have these two coins that I got that they belong to, or they're little mementos from a, an office, female officer. Um, uh, um, mentorship group that I'm part of and then the Wonder Woman um, uh, things. You need to get one of them. Or I like to call it Wonder When. <laughs> but Wonder the sword when. comes out, which uh, I think is pretty cool. Uh, somebody tell you it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and it says she wasn't looking for a knight, she was looking for a sword. And so I just think if you guys live your lives that way, there's nothing that you guys can't do either. So thank you so much for letting me support. What do you guys think? very keenly aware that I am standing between you and leaving for drill weekend so I I will keep this very short thank you so much for the kind words sir you say all those things and it makes me sound like you know I'm just this amazing person which of course I am amazing but <laughs> I did not do it on my own I had a lot of people behind me and my family most mostly um, helping me along my way. And I have had nothing but a very warm welcome from everybody at this wing. I really have. Bridget said that this morning, and and I can't even, I can't even uh, do it justice and say it better than what you did this morning because from the moment I came in here and I met people in this wing, it's just been amazing. And I just think that this wing has so much potential. We're already incredibly effective and a wonderful wing, and I can't wait to take it to that next level with you, sir. So thank you so much for having the faith in me to come forward and be your partner as we take this wing to the next level. So, and thank you all for coming. I know you didn't have to be here, so I really appreciate it. Chief, thank you so much for narrating. Chaplain, thank you. 
Amelia, thank you very much for those beautiful, that beautiful um, rendition of the national anthem. She's also going to sing us in that in the first song afterwards. So thank you very much. And Fernanda, thank you very much for coming. We're, we're a host family this year. She's from Mexico, Monterey, Mexico, and um, she is a, a cultural exchange student and also helping with um, with uh, as a nanny for our children this year. So. Um, she's been instrumental and, and very, very helpful in our family as well. So I'm glad that you could be here and be thank part of this you, as well. Thank you. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, join us in the DFAC afterwards for some cake and some coffee so you can make your drive home a little bit more pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please rise for the singing of the Air Force song afterwards. Please join us immediately following in the dining facility to congratulate Colonel Gellner and, small reception, uh, and provide a small reception in her honor. Thank you all for coming. Please join me in singing. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, soon to meet our thunder. Please join us in the uh, dining facility for uh, cake, cream, drinks, and stuff like that. Thank you.